so much for having me man it's so good to chat to you i feel like it's been ages yeah, but it's right? fantastic to be here it's so it's so funny that we know each other by our games or by our you know our, our creations but we i think it's the first i think i met you once at san francisco uh, that's right yeah we we hung out in san francisco at uh fg the flash gaming summit the yeah. very last one wow. the very last one at the FGS, and, yeah. was it with you that we went to uh, alcatraz to do some uh some uh, some things over there. Was that there? That's right. Yeah, we did a bit of gardening. Wow, wow, that was an awesome event. I think I think that those guys still do it actually, the uh, FGL events or something like that. But yeah, we met uh, like briefly over there. But uh, yeah, we mostly know each other about our creation. That's how oh, you doing, man? I like your setup in the background. Just look at that. You just thanks, man. It's not <laughs> staged at all. Like it's just like this all the time. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> With that angle and everything. I bet you spend like an hour saying, oh my God, is it okay? Is it okay? Why, why do That's, we, it. <laughs> That's why we're so late today. I was like, no, no, I've got to set the room up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, sweet. So how has it been knowing, man? With super oh, it's good, man. Fun, with your Kickstarter and everything. It's been a week, I think, right? With your Kickstarter? No. Yeah, it's like a week today. Um, it's been really good. Like it's been, it's been great. Um, because I know you've been through it, like with Infernax, and uh, yeah. it's an emotional roller coaster, isn't it? Yeah, totally, totally. We went a different road with uh, Infernax actually, but uh, yeah, like uh, the, the way we did it was uh, it was only uh, ten bucks, uh, and we said like whatever you give us, you give to us, we're gonna release the game as is. Because the thing is, we had uh, Infernax done, it was a uh, game that we did like in three weeks, and it was there, but it was like not as good as we could have done it, you know? Uh, yeah. So we're just like, okay, if you give us like 10 bucks, we're gonna release it like this. And we got supports and everything, but we were like, uh, we could do so much better with that game. It was like, uh, fuck it, we're, not, we're gonna assume the cost and everything, and let's try to do it, you know? So now we decided to go full throttle with it instead. But uh, yeah, I know that it's like, uh, are, is it going to, to make it or no? It's like, it's... Yeah, it's, absolutely. Like, because yeah, because that's what we've done is like, we have a, a proper goal that we're like, like, we've got to get 100% or we get nothing. Yeah, so, it's a good um, idea though. Yeah, it's no words. Um, I guess we kind of need it. We still need to finish the game, and so that's kind of what we need to do. Yeah. Um, so like, it's it's been great. Like we we spent a long time getting that video ready. So like, if you saw it, you saw, I know you watched it just then, mm -hmm. and we have like a kid dressed up as the character, and we had to like go out and film that, and we had so many like long clips. We had a bit like where he did this awesome like slow motion jump over a log. Okay. Um, it looked super epic, but when we got down to it, we're like. This makes no sense, so we had to like get rid of all of it. Oh. <laughs> so, and was yeah. it like somebody you knew, kid, or did, how did you hire a kid for a shooting? Just, just found one, like just one. <laughs> <laughs> Lying in the forest, there was one right there. <laughs> yeah, it was just that. I had my ice cream van, and you know. Um, <laughs> this, uh... <laughs> if you do that, I'm gonna give you a rare Pokemon. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, no, he was um he was a cousin uh he's a cousin, young cousin who just looked the part like he looked so much like the character. It was it was really kind of kind of crazy for me. But um yeah, so it's been crazy. We 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 launched it last week mm -hmm. and we had like a really big push and every day you kind of wake up and you're kind of like, right, how can we tell people about it again? Yeah. And you know, um it gets it gets trickier and trickier, but um it's cool like it's great to see people like commenting on the game and seeing some of it and just getting some feedback and getting people on board and that's kind of one of the big parts of like why we wanted to do it yeah and uh, i think that the first one i mean you made like a you made an adventure pause already as a flash game like i think it was two years ago three years ago something was yeah flash. yeah no you're right yeah about three years ago okay so yeah so then we wanted to make super adventure pals the flash game too okay um and we spent months and months on that. And then, you know, as you know, the Flash game market just like disappeared, like the rug got pulled from under us. Mm -hmm. And we had this like, extremely bloated, um, ugly game that didn't run very well at all. And then no one wanted it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like we kind of, um, it's been through a few iterations, but this version that you see now in the video with all the kind of new artwork and the gameplay and stuff, that's been about a year. 
um, okay. but about a year into it. So which is why we're coming to Kickstarter now because we just need that last push to get to it. Okay. Um, but this one's like made um, using hacks. Uh, okay. So like really similar to Action Script 3. Oh, okay, so using hacks and still flash for the animation, I guess? Um, so with the animation, we're using um, Spine, which is oh, by, okay. it's like a skeletal animation tool. It's really cool, it's oh, really okay. nice. Okay, so uh, that's the software where you can export like the individual PNGs and then you can uh, you can animate them as the movie clip, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can like drag them around and also they have like mesh deformations. Okay. So you can just have like, it's really, you can be really lazy. You can just have like an idle pose and then just deform the legs and just okay. do a walk cycle like that. Okay. Um, just with like a flat image, so that's kind of really cool. And then it does all that nice like transitions okay. automatically because it's like a skeletal tool, so it's like three D animation system, I guess, but for two D. But I saw a uh, little banner of yours saying like we're gonna be on Xbox One. I saw that on the on Facebook. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's kind of just we just got confirmed. Um, we found out like a little bit before the launch of the Kickstarter, but it was too late to sort of mention it then. So then okay. we, like. We just kind of just kind of announced it now, um, but that's really exciting. It's it's going to be like my first console um, project, and I can't wait to get into it. And we're still trying with like the other, you know, the other big guys, but we're just waiting to hear back from them. Okay, Is it, I think you went to uh, PAX, right? I think you went to one PAX with the with that the Super Adventure Pulse and Armor game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so to... was it there that you got in contact with? Uh... Microsoft and our people? Was, was it there that you showcased your game so big guys can be interested? That was the idea. Okay. Um, it was actually at uh, maybe GDC. I think Julian, the artist, went and he met someone from Xbox and they said, like, okay, well, you know, let us know when you're a bit further on and, and get in touch. And then we just kind of registered and we had a bit of help from Armor Games as well in that whole process. Okay, and okay, okay. The dev kit has just arrived. Like it's it's sat right there. It's really exciting. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That's pretty. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, my only question would be like, if you are developing in uh, developing in uh, Ax, uh, how is Ax uh, compatible with uh, with consoles? Or you'll have to convert that to something else later on, or. Yeah. So you know? it it reminds me of like we were saying we met in um, uh, GDC a few years ago, and I remember you did a talk about like Action Script three to Unity. Ah, and like yeah. we have the system, um, and we're doing something really similar where we're taking yeah. our code and like um, uh, sort of porting it, uh, porting the code, and then just writing some interfaces for the like the artwork and the okay. spine animation okay. stuff. So to okay. kind of, so it would be like it will be a Unity game by the time it gets onto Xbox. Okay, okay. So you kind of have the same workflow as myself, saying that you use you still use. Uh, uh, well, you still use Spine though. You don't even use Flash anymore. But like my workflow is, we use Flash for animations and everything, and we still use AS3 because we can prototype super fast. And then at the end, we convert everything to Unity, and you go there. So why not go from startup from Unity then? Is there some reason you start with X? I don't know. Like what? What your? What, I mean, like what would sort of? What would you say to that? Because um, if if we're sort of doing the same thing, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good <laughs> for point. me, it's just like at, at the time it was like a really uh, sort of alien way of doing things. Yeah. So like you have like components and you have like game objects and there's a lot of things running under the hood that you don't understand. And like yeah. Action Script Three, anything that happens, you've written it and yeah. you know you know what's happening there. So um, for me, it just felt like so much more like I was at home. Okay. Uh, and it was okay. only like when the, when the console stuff came out recently that we took the decision that like, okay, well, now we've got to go to Unity. Yeah, we, yeah, we got no choice, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, the, the, my reason is uh, I have like eight years of tools and uh, skills and, um, you know, habits into Flash and the action script that uh, now compared to Unity, like everybody's saying, hey, go to Unity, it'll be faster. I'm like, yeah, but I'm already super fast with Flash because I built this awesome thing, you know? Yeah, like, got... as... go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just saying, yeah, you've, you've already got everything that you'd need anyway, so. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like, yeah, for example, Flash was a gun and Unity is like an AK-47, all right? So people are like, yeah, it's a better tool. Like, yeah, but over the past year, I've converted my gun into a fucking tank. <laughs> and now I can go whatever I want with it. Like, why would I go to that gun? You know, so that's yeah, how I feel. But I have to convert to the uh, 
to the AK-47 <laughs> at the end for consoles <laughs> to keep it there. But uh, yeah, like I feel super comfortable with my workflow and with uh, with the entire team as well. I mean, I think you've worked with your... Uh, wh what's your name of your partner again? I think uh, Julian is the artist uh, for the game. Yeah, and Julian uh, Julian Wilton. Okay. Hello. He was like... How big uh, is the team? He was um, like Corrupted Games back in the Flash days. Okay, okay. It rings a bell, rings a bell. Probably played one in this game. Yeah. And uh, how big is the team? I think I saw three people in the video. Yeah, so we have um, like at Massive Monster, we're doing a couple games at the moment. Okay. Um, so for Adventure Pals, it's just me doing the programming and Julian doing the artwork. But we've had other people come in and help. Obviously, like we've had uh, really cool musicians. We've had like Hyperduck, and they did the music for Dust and Elysian Tale. Yeah, um, and they've done and some Brutal like. Bison, I think. Yeah, yeah, Burrito Bison, Kingdom Rush, um, yeah. a whole bunch of uh, songs um, from like, yeah, from the from the good old days. Yeah, and I know that Juicy Beast use uh, use the uh, uh, are really very close to the upper dog. I think they made the music for all this game with Juicy yeah, yeah. Beast guys. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. They did. Um, so yeah, they're doing the music for um, for for Adventure Pals. They've yeah. done some really really cool stuff. And then we've had like um, uh, John Davies, who was the artist or is the artist uh sorry was the artist for megadev who made super house of dead ninjas and he's done a lot of the animation work a lot of the spine stuff that just makes the game come to life so it's like people coming on and they're doing their roles and then sort of moving on so it's there's just two of us from the beginning okay. right through to the end but we've had people coming in and helping and stuff I really love your uh, your logo, by the way, Massive Monster. When I saw it, I was like, ah, oh, this is so much my kind of stuff, you know, the kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like, it's a little bit like Juicy Beast and Behemoth, like, it's really my kind of style, you know, it looks really like Flash, but like very high quality design, so I really loved it. So how was started, Mass how is uh, Massive Mo Monster started? How did it, st uh, was it only for Super Adventure Balls, or how did the company got created? Yeah, the, com the company came out kind of like the, the ruins, like the rubble of the Flash industry and like uh, burst forth as a glorious phoenix. Yeah. As <laughs> <laughs> it was like um, myself, Jimp, who did the kind of Sushi Cat games. He does all the companions on Congregate. Yeah. Um, the, the guys from Megadev and uh, yeah, and Julian wasn't even in the picture at that point. So we kind of got guys together. guys from Megadev as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. um, we kind of, we all kind of. I moved to the area where they were, okay. and we sort of hanging out, and obviously like really admire their stuff. Like it's so good. Mm. Um, and we kind of all formed up, and we teamed up, and we decided we would go out and make, like you're saying, like real games, like co full commercial release games. Um, ideally, like getting to console at some point. Yeah. Um, but the team was too big, so. The Megadev guys have gone off and they're doing their own thing now um, yep. and they're making some cool stuff. And so now it's just myself and Jimp and Julian, um, the three of us as sort of as massive monster. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And uh, now I think that the uh, Super Adventure Ball got public. Is it going to be published by Armor Games? Yeah? No? Yes? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So okay. they are kind of like they're kind of moving towards publishing Steam and like now console stuff as well. Yeah. So because um, we've like worked with them for so many years, um, as, as you have as well, um, we just kind of stayed in touch. And we, when we had this original, you know, I was saying this flat, this flash, like bloated, horrible Super Adventure Pals 2, we were showing it to everyone like that we could find. And um, no one knew us. And they were just kind of like, what is this flash mess? Like, this is no good. Um, <laughs> But luckily, Armor Games, they, they, you know, we worked with them for, for a long time and they could see the potential. And okay. we told them, like, you know, what our vision was. We didn't really want to, this wasn't the game. This was, like, the start of something. This is the sort of idea. Yeah. And they kind of uh, were, were just kind of got on board and they've been fantastic, like, amazing partners. Um, and they've, they were good enough to fund us for this first chunk. And now that's kind of come to an end. And that's why we're sort of at Kickstarter now. Okay, okay. Because yeah, like uh, having a flash background is either, it's, it's funny, when we were to, uh, to pack this here and there, uh, either people were like super like excited because, hey, I played Frantic Frigate one time, oh my god. <laughs> so I got like one guy from Sony saying like, yeah, I played Set of Coliseum, you did that? I was like, 
Yeah. Like, oh, I got it. Let's talk. Blah, blah, blah. And on the other end, it was like, oh, you only made Flash game? Oh, okay. Come back when you make real games. <laughs> like, what the fuck? This is real yeah. game. I spent like eight years of my time making 20 games ish. <laughs> it's not something. Yeah. It's something. It's so, and you can like count to how many like gameplays those games got as well back in the back in the day. Like, yeah. I um, I think it's really sad that it's kind of it is kind of looked down. All of a sudden, it was like, nope, <laughs> that's yeah, not. Yeah, well, cool. it, it it went down with the rise of mobiles. Like, it was really like this. You know, people who came because the flash was good when people just wanted a quick fix. They're just like, oh, I'm in, and I'm on the break at work or something. I don't want to pay for. Uh, a yeah. new game, so I go to Flash games and everything. And then mobile came and just made that happen on mobile and made that very more practical mobile, you know. Uh, exactly, people so. could take it wherever wherever they went. But then, like, a lot of the Flash guys, like, including, like, you were sort of doing that thing where you'd have the Flash version and the mobile version. Yeah. Like, I remember Peacekeepers. Like, I remember you showed it to me on your iPad oh, and yeah. you had it, like, the Flash version, but you also had it running on your iPad. And I kind of remember being like, whoa. <laughs> That's genius. Um, yeah, but like, did that? Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so that. But then that's kind of like you cut, the flash one didn't wasn't worth doing so much anymore. And then the mobile market is so flooded now as well. Yeah. Like it's so hard to kind of compete in there. Um, yeah. You know, against your supercells and your people like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, right now we just launched a new uh, our last game, which is uh, on mobile. We launched it in March, and we did it on Flash and on mobile. And uh, it was it was it was good actually. It was, it's still uh, hang on. I'm trying something. Uh, can I do this? Boot. Yay! All right. So now it looked like I'm watching you. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, because my camera was flipping. I was like looking outside the, the, the corner. Anyway, oh, right. <laughs> I turned off the stream because I could hear myself twice and it was confusing. <laughs> okay. So I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was talking about uh, some vinyl. Yeah, uh, we uh, released it, and I was uh, quite um, interested to know if the how much flash plays could we get with you know a flash game. So some vinyl has been done with the starting and air. So it's a flash game even on mobile, you know, and it's run. It's able to run on an iPad third generation. So now it's running well and everything. So we put it in mobile. We got I don't know, maybe uh, we got front page by Google, and we got uh, over uh, two hundred thousand download, I think. And uh, we've wow. put it on flash, and we got like two million downloads, two million plays within a week. It was crazy. Wow. It was like, oh, okay. So people saying like, like, Flash is dead. It's not dead. It's not as good as it was back in the days. Because back in the days, it was like you put anything in there and get millions of views and everything. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's still 2 million views, you know? It's still 2 million people that now know about Zombital and might go to the mobile version. So it, yeah. has, it still has something. But you cannot just go on Flash and say like, hey, I want to make money and feed my kids and pay my bill. <laughs> not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. That's not gonna happen anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, mm -hmm. sure. So, um, Armor Game. Uh, is it the uh, how many games that they publish to Steam? It's very interesting that they are making the the, the 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 shift as well. I mean, they publish Flash game now. Flash is kind of dead, so they kind of move on on Steam. And I want to know about that. I mean, I haven't yeah. talked to them about it. They're doing exactly what I'm doing as well. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, there's a fire. Let's run away. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so I know that they've um, definitely done a few. They've definitely done um, Gemcraft. Oh, yeah, okay. Something like that. Um, and then there was um, uh, one or two more. But uh, they've got a huge sort of stable of games that are going to come out. Like they, they've got a bunch of sort of developers, like us included, um, who are working on a bunch of games okay. um, that will be like coming out. So I think their first like full wave of games um, is like forthcoming. Okay, okay. So they fund people just to make a, a uh, I'm not gonna say decent, but a, a great prototype to try to show to other people and say like, hey, to get hyped, to get people hyped about it. And then they have to continue. Like, how is it work to finish the uh, the rest of the uh, the game? Do they always want to have to go to Kickstarter or they can get funds 100% uh, by our game or? I think like going to Kickstarter is to totally our fault. Like <laughs> we're just like too ambitious because okay. when you go, when you go from like a flash game to like a full Steam release game, you're so much you know like you're so liberated because you can do so many things. But then you just 
I, I think we like took on so much mm. in that like we've got 125 levels like 12 hours of gameplay well, 125 levels yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have, like arenas we have every every set of five levels has like a quest okay. that you get from the town and they're all like individual and um we just kind of went a bit crazy and i think if we'd been able to do all that or rein in our vision a little bit um the armor games would have you know when that finished if we could have finished on time then that would have been great um okay. but we just we just we just feel liberated we feel really excited and we really want to make this particular game with all these things in it yeah. um and we're so close as well um but yeah so they th what they do is um is they they fund you um to make your game like you you have an agreement with them it's probably not for me to kind of speak on their behalf <laughs> yeah i should have had them on the show actually that's a good point yeah, I'm, sure <laughs> I'm gonna break all your ndas man <laughs> you're gonna get some <laughs> troubles <laughs> yeah it's like oh no they're watching right now or something and I'm, just like, <laughs> <laughs> i'm forwarding the video after that <laughs> yeah, yeah um no so they're, they're they're like full 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 publishers and they're they're sort of as long as they sort of like what you're doing and they mm -hmm. like you and it's 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 a full you know it's not a flash portal anymore it's a yeah. it's a indie game publisher yeah. uh, which is fantastic we've sort of been part of that transition which has been really really cool yeah i was asking all those questions because a lot of people here actually are game devs or want to do games and you know get published and get talked about it and everything so i was like oh i would like to know about other <laughs> games and how they are right now since you know they have been working with indie game de developer for so long time and now they're switching to a publisher And so yeah, it'll be interesting. I might, I might yeah. have tasks on the on the channel at one point. That'd be good. Yeah, definitely, definitely do. Like I, I, I don't know like whether they're looking for more stuff or whatever, but I know that they're amazing to work with. And for like game developers who are looking to work with um, someone who just kind of supports you and doesn't put any pressure on you and just kind of they kind of style themselves as your biggest cheerleader, and that's just like a really wonderful thing to have. Mm -hmm. So. Um, They uh, they've been fantastic. I, I, uh, I would say like if you're making a game and you're looking for some kind of publishers, do consider them. Give them a shout um, because they are just so lovely. And, um, and they'll send you lots of sushi cats as well. Ah, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> yeah. Did they have a booth at uh, PAX? Did Armor Game had a booth, or you had like individual booths for all the games? Yeah, Armor Games had a big sort of castle and okay. um, had like five stations with all the different games. There okay. was. Um, There was Adventure Pals. There was Never Give Up, which is the other game we're working on. There was well, um, Never Give Up. You're working on that? Yeah. You got me hyped. I, re I really love the uh, Don't Give Up uh, Two and One. Actually, it was like that's my kind of game. Uh, so we, yeah, we're doing a full-on and um, full-on console. Uh, sorry, not console. <laughs> Steam version. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> full-on Steam version uh, as well. So I mean, and we also have. Um, Ego Raptors doing the voice for uh, for the main character. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you get the Ego Raptor? You got it from uh, you, you talking? Okay, Ego Raptor. It will be there for Never Give Up. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Shit. I've already got. I've got like half the the audio like on my computer already. Shut He's up still and got take my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm amazing. talking about the wrong game today. Clearly, like. <laughs> 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 oh, that's amazing. How come you're working on different games at the same time, actually? That was like um, pretty much to do with like the way the company kind of started where we had like more guys. Mm -hmm. So the idea was like we'd split, we'd kind of split the work up a bit. Yeah. Um, it didn't sort of pan out that way and it's just kind of worked out that um, the other thing is like they're both platformers. So there's like a lot of crossover with a lot of the basic stuff and then just the fine tuning and um, is is sort of like what I spend more time on um, so if I like put in a big feature like you know I don't know um, controller control Slow menus motions. I can just like slap that across the other side and then it's done there as well okay. so there's a lot of like um, you know to and fro which is really helpful but and also like a lot of the work and the differentiation comes from the artist as well so like Jimp is the artist on never give up okay, okay. okay. Oh. nice okay so there's like one artist per project and you code both of them Yeah, and, <laughs> and I just never sleep, basically. So. <laughs> well, that's the life of a game dev, actually. <laughs> that's the life. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, so two two games at the same time, or more than that? Oh uh, no, just two. Just two is two. enough. Okay. Two is enough. 
And was yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, two thousand. I'm working on three, and it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> how do you how do you like manage that time though? Like, do you say like today is this game, today is that game, today, and then? Uh, or I feel like doing this, and I'm gonna do it. Or... The way that we set it up. I mean, you know, you know about the uh, the news at Buzzer Studio, right? In two thousand thirteen, it was it was very bad for us, and we kind of split. Yeah. So yeah. we uh, basically, we didn't split, it's just like we had to pull out the plug if we wanted to keep our brand. So we had to fire everybody, we had to lose our studio, sell our equipment and everything, and we came up at zero dollar, like back at square one. But at wow. least we had the brand, so we still had our flag and our fans yeah. and like uh, the big... And that, it's such cool um, branding, like all the kind of like, it's so, you kind of totally have that kind of like, yeah, thing going. And it's just so cool. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's probably because before that, the the, uh, the company we used to work, like the three co-founder of the studio, we were working on like kitty, kids games and like build the bear games and stuff like that like very <laughs> cutey and heart and stuff like that so we're like yeah, okay no, we have up. to make our own company that goes exactly the opposite way so that's how Buzzer Studio came up you know and we yeah. just wanted to make like explosions and Contra style games and Mortal Kombat and stuff like that so yeah it was like a liberation for ourselves like, as well like <laughs> we're all on our on our own now um but I can yeah. imagine that just building up in you guys for like years and years and years and years until it just <laughs> explodes and they have <laughs> berserk studios. And then shit out of Flash game comes out. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was talking about that because, um, uh, yeah, so we had like zero money left. We had uh, just the three co-founder and we needed a break. We were like, okay, what's going to happen? I had three kids at that point. Uh, I still have three kids, but you know, it was like, okay. I have a couple of money in my pocket now. Uh, what's what's happening next? You know, so I went to a game dev uh, jam uh, and made uh, just ships and beats like in two days by myself alone because so I just wanted to see like what can I do by myself and I made the uh, the first level of just ships and beats within two days. Uh, I didn't win the contest, but I really loved the game. So I had like only one more day of, de of development on it, and I sent that to the uh, indie mega devs guys. Um, in, uh, and uh, in the mega booth uh, at PAX, and I won. They selected me. It was like, okay, with that wow. little three days prototype. It was like, okay. Meanwhile, I was actually, you know, that was just a little something, like a little seed that I was planting. It was like, hey, that would be fun if it works, and just went the other way. And it did, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I was working uh, with Mark, actually one of the two co-founders of Berserk, with a prototype called Bloody Muscle, which is a completely different game. We were working on that, getting super psyched about it and everything. And at the same time, I was working with uh, Etienne, making some battles, saying like, okay, we can make a little quick game like the old days and see like, what if, if we can get some funds, you know, get some, uh, like a Kickstarter game. So a way that we could have talk with the, the people, people can give support and they get, they get something in return. So there was like those three games over there. Plus Infernax that was on our shelf somewhere in the background that we never released. It was like, yeah, we could try that out, you know? So that was our like four seeds that we planted. Now, the thing is, um, uh, yeah, so Just Ships and Beats worked because we got picked. So that seed got worked. Whoop. Infernax, <laughs> the Kickstarter, people showed us enough support. So we say like, okay, fuck it. Let's go at full throttle. So that's see that sprout as well and Zombile just exploded and give us like enough funds to support the entire team you know so right wow. now wow. Zombile on its own we just like we keep working on it we have our team a team dedicated on it but Zombile yeah. we give just enough support just enough funds to support the entire team you know so i can feed my wow. kids and i can <laughs> continue on working on those other projects you know so that's like the state of the studio right now we just planted the shit ton of seeds here and there just to see what would happen and the thing is it's just like boop, 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 it, it all happens so it's a good problem to have but it was like okay now i have too many projects in my face you know so yeah i mean who could have predicted that like in 2013 that you'd suddenly wind up with like four amazing projects um and actually, and it's a, and it's and it's a problem. Like that's such a great like way to turn things yeah. around. 
Oh, like that's a, that's amazing. Yeah, totally. So right now that's where we stand. Uh, Just Ships and Meats, we got our funds as well by the Canadian government. Uh, we we got funded for that, so we can go on and finish the game. And uh, yeah, so now we're like, okay, the team is uh, we can feed ourselves, we can pay our bills and everything. And now let's try to make all those projects. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you thinking of maybe bringing some people on, like to help, or we hired a new guy actually, Kojak TSL, uh, which is was a uh, follow uh, viewers on my channel. We met uh, on Twitch actually. Like he was like somebody watching me, and after a while, he gave me some code. So I said, I said like, hey, do you want a job? So it's for like I need <laughs> help on this and on this and on this, and I would take the donation I received from Twitch and just give him to uh, give him that. And it gives me some features here and there. So he learned how to work with me, how like co how to code with Flash and all those stuff. And yeah. then little by little, I kind of like I liked how it worked, and I got it on, into the team. So now he's like a full a full fledged berserker. He's like working. He has his, he has his avatar and everything. So now he's working with us, and he's an awesome guy. Kojak, speaking to you, man, you're awesome. <laughs> So yeah, and now actually we will need another coder. We would like it, we had enough jobs to have another coder, but we just don't have the money. So if we do that, I mean, with the events that happened in 2013 that we had to fire everybody, we don't want that to reproduce again. You no, know? so we are very super skeptic and you know very uh, not skeptic but uh, careful. We're very careful how to uh, to hire other people. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Do, do you think like the? I'm mean, like, what is the answer to that? Because that's it's such a tough thing. Like, do do you just kind of hire people for specific things, and then at the end of it, say like, okay, thanks, and maybe we'll hire you again later, or like, because as soon as you've got that like monthly thing, you're committed, no matter what happens. Yeah. Which is so in in game development, it's just so such a difficult position. Yeah, exactly. So what we do is we pay by the task. Pretty much, so like it was like okay, we will need a boost on this thing. Uh, we end up paying more than having a regular salary because when you pay, you know, by uh, contractual work, you pay more. But at least it's way it's way easier to manage, and yeah. uh, you're not stressed at the end of the month because this guy has no work. Uh, okay, uh, let's start a new game, and then oh fuck, we have something else. Let's ditch that game. Oh well, we have a game that's on the shelf, half done. <laughs> Oh shit! So it was like a nightmare. We had so yeah. many games that uh, we have Frantic Frigate 2 actually on our shelf somewhere. It's all done. It's all complete. But now it's what? On, yeah, it's there. It's on. It's it's all done. It's complete and everything. But we were trying to sell it through. Uh, you were trying to sell it on on Flash, and uh, the Flash days were going down. So we have it right there. <laughs> but if so we close. release that so on Flash, it's not gonna make anything, you know. So it's like a couple of months of work in the garbage, you know. So shit. So, yeah. But that's uh, but Frantic Frigate, the first one was like huge. Like it was that was a great game. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was something I made the uh, like. Again, it was like my wife went out a weekend with the kids for X reason. I don't remember. It was like, hey, let's make a game, and I make Frantic Frigate. <laughs> in a week, in just in a couple days. Yeah, in three days, and then I said like, oh, I want to try to sell my own, and then uh, I have put it on a, through FGL, and a couple of people was like, oh, it's it was getting some traction. So then I asked Mark, can you put some real visuals into this game? And he did, and like <laughs> all in all, I think it took like two weeks to do. The first, wow. yeah, the first Frantic Forget. It was like it got so popular. It's like it's it's insane. We were yeah, uh, that was huge. Yeah, it's like um, they said it's like it's almost like those like great songs like they say they just happen straight away. Like there's so many things like what what we're doing with um Adventure Powers are just like so much work and just work work work. But sometimes like things just come easily, yeah. and that's like that's the best. Yeah, I remember uh, there was one guy from uh, Tiny Build. I think it's one of the co-founder. I rem I don't. I think it's Tom. His name is not. It's Tom. He was saying like I, I met him in a congregate party at one time, and he was like, "Hey, my name is Tom, and blah blah. I made this game." It's like, "Sorry, I don't know it." And I made this game. No, and this game. No, and then like the other guy, his friend, just said he made. Uh, super awesome dinosaurs that shoot lasers when they roar. It's like, oh yeah, play a game. It's <laughs> awesome. It's like, oh fuck. He's like, I made that in two days. Like everybody knew him by that very stupid game that he made like in the weekend just for fun. 
He was like, I made other stuff that is all awesome. <laughs> no one cares. No, no one cares. cares. Like the most popular one was dinosaurs that shoot lasers when they roar. You can, you, you should check that game. It's awesome. I think, yeah, I think I remember it, and I, I was a big fan of his as well. I think it was like called I Smell on Newgrounds, and um, Maybe. and he did a course like No Time to Explain, which I think yeah, I think yeah, I read somewhere there he did go. that like really quickly as a bit of a joke, and then boom, we have Tiny Build. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's that's fun. That's funny how uh, sometimes you're working on a big project and then you're just doing this di this thing as a joke and this ends up to explode i mean josh and me is exactly the same thing actually i made a game jam game dev jam game and got it there and it exploded yeah it's, that's it's kind of it kind of makes you depressed when you work on something for a long time <laughs> i should be working so hard <laughs> Did you work on both uh, give up games? Because I feel like give up would be like that kind of game. It's like let's do something very quick and like then it grows, it grows. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I did. Um, I did give up too. Okay. Um, but um, the first one was done by uh, John Cooney, JMTBO2. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and he was like with Tass Tass Tasselfoot. Okay. Um, and give up two was with Tasselfoot as well. But uh, JMTBO2 or John had left. Armor Games by that point to go work for Congregate, so they kind of came to us instead. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, and so that's now why we're doing Never Give Up with them. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we've talked we've talked a little bit about Massive Monster, a bit about Armor Games. Um, just you know. I hope that people like watching this will check out Adventure Pals as well and mm -hmm. like consider backing us. Um, thank you so much for your your pledge as well, man. That was so kind of you. you Dude, to... nothing. I mean, if I can so... help a fellow indie, I will. Yeah. Ah, oh, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But um, unless, yeah, I mean, I know you said there's some developers and stuff. We could talk about developy type of things or. Yeah, you were. Uh, how many time uh, have you spent on the Super Adventure Ball already? The, so the new one. Yeah, too much time. So the the, <laughs> current, the, the current version has been a year, uh, but as I said, like we started it as like a big flash horrible project, um, like more like three years ago. Okay. So like making this game has been part of my life for like three years now. Mm -hmm. But this this kind of. Uh, version that I'm so excited about, so proud of, has been about a year. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, again, it's based on like some of some of it's based on the Super House of Dead Ninjas engine because we used to be, as I said, we were partners with those Mega Dev guys. Okay. So some some of it, like all the collision stuff, is based on that, which kind of makes it feel really good. And um, Mike Tucker is the programmer on that, um, and he's just he's just so great. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's been a year and we kind of started from scratch and so everything that you see has been created and built in the last year. Okay. Can you uh, estimate how, many, how much time is it left to uh, finish the whole game? Yeah, I think, I think only a couple more months now. Um, wow. we, only that? Whoa, okay. Um, like, like as in beginning of next year, we should hope we're sort of want to release um, kind of time. So yeah, just a few more months, like not another year or anything. But I'm not saying like one month or two. I'm saying like maybe four, something like that. Yeah, just counting in months, not in years. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Counting in months, not years, which is the big step. Okay. Uh, but we we still have so like we, there are five areas. There's like uh, a foresty area, um, a zombie cat pirate area. Uh, Post-apocalyptic dinosaur area, Lost City of Crablantis, which is like the crab people um, in their sunken city, and then there's the the moon. So there are five areas. Like four of them are pretty much locked down. The fifth one still got a lot of, a lot of quest work to do there, a lot of bug fixing, and then we have to like move to Unity as well. So there's um, there's still more work to be done, but we're we're getting there. We're on the we're on the final like leg of this journey which is um hard to believe yeah and yeah. um how can i say that um uh, i was about to say something i forgot my questions <laughs> <laughs> was it uh what was it about was it about timing or uh okay no you said you spent like one year on the project uh, how has you how have you been able to sustain yourself for all this time all this time 
So we got um, we got some funding from Armor Games to yeah. get the game done, but we that was what what we told we thought it would take half the amount of time it has done. Okay. So we've we've had that um, up to a point, and um, now now we're hoping that Kickstarter is going to come through and that will take us through for the last bit, and then we can start like getting the game out there, selling it. Um, and promoting it, like we're trying to go to a lot of shows as well, because that is yeah. just the best thing, like seeing people play the game. Um, and particularly if you like kind of step back and pretend that you haven't made it and just kind of hear what they honestly think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good playtest uh, session. Those, uh, those, those packs, those events is really good to see like, okay, I fucked up this place or oh, okay, this, this place is very good. So yeah, yeah so. it's amazing it's definitely amazing for that um and like we were at um pax as i say and uh there were so many things that people just pointed out or got wrong uh or sorry that i designed wrong and i could see that from them playing it and it was just such a useful amazing sort of play test session yeah I remember the first iteration of uh, Just Ships and Beats, nobody was able to play it. <laughs> it's like, it looks awesome, but like, it's impossible to play. I'm like, okay, I toned down the difficulty a bit, and I was like, uh, it looks awesome, but it's impossible to play. And I did that like six times. I, I lowered the difficulty of the game six times until I found the sweet spot where like my daughter <laughs> or my mom can play or my hardcore fans can play or my hardcore, my hardcore player can play and say like oh this is very difficult or at least it's not like hey it's impossible to play but yeah it's impossible to know when you're on the uh, yeah, I mean those things you can see that from going to PAX and those events like that when you showcase your yeah. game that's where you can see that I've heard someone say that you should make the game so easy that you can play it blindfolded and then call that hard <laughs> <laughs> because you just point. know it inside out um, yeah. and you just completely assume so much knowledge on the part of the player mm. uh, it's so easy to do that so um, yeah they say blindfold yourself play it through um, and then call that hard and work down from there <laughs> I remember with uh, the one thing though I was to say is that Peacekeeper for example we said that after the 30th uh, level we're gonna end the game so like oh okay you can continue if you want but uh, that's it the game is over and uh, I was playing it going to 35 I was like ah it's good enough nobody gonna go through that anyway and then people emailed us and say like hey level 175 is impossible like what? <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about We're and send us screenshots where the game just broke and there's like a bazillions of enemies on the screen it was lagging working at three fps but it was still <laughs> playing the game trying to beat it i was like why are you it's not fun anymore why are you doing that <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool that people were so committed though yeah i mean so yeah there are people that will be better than you at your game which is my point <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone is better than me at my games. Like, do you, do you get a, do you get like a chance to play like a lot of games, or are you like making games the whole time? Uh, these days, I can only make games, and actually, like I have a, a small list of to do stuff uh, daily, like uh, exercise and you know eat wealthy, blah, blah blah. And that in that list has play 15 minutes of video games. <laughs> For oh, that's real. so cool. For real. I just like, I want to take 15 minutes of my entire day and say like, okay, I did it today. So I have to schedule it somewhere because uh, with the kids, wife, schools and everything, like every part of my day is super scheduled. So it was like, I try to cram a 15 minutes of play every day because it's, it's became impossible <laughs> for me to play. So I love that it's a chore. Like I love that. Yeah. <laughs> just like a chore. I was like, oh man, do I have to? <laughs> I don't want to play that. But yeah, just like I, I played a lot of StarCraft too, or uh, I played the uh, Overwatch these days. So I love, I love those games. Uh, but they don't count into my 15 minutes of gameplay. I mean, as a game dev, I feel I should play very different, and I should broader my inventory of game to play. As if like I'm a, I was a writer, but I wouldn't read any books. It's like. So it's like you wouldn't watch if you were a filmmaker you wouldn't watch like the transformers movies you'd watch some kind of art house yeah well, like, all across the board i mean i have to i have to play triple a games as well because it's nice to see like what the broader audience what's the main general people like to do and uh, i can see some stuff in there 
to uh, take into my indie games and have my own signature, something that you never see, but a game mechanic, I can like borrow that from this game or that game and say like, oh, yeah. that's a cool mechanic. I can apply that to my sauce, to my signature. So I think it's good that just like play a very different game. I mean, StarCraft 2 right now, if I play more game than StarCraft 2, I won't learn anything new as a game dev from StarCraft 2, you know? Unless yeah. I make a StarCraft 2 game, like, uh, unless I make a, uh, an RTS game, uh, yeah. I don't need to become an expert at that. You know? No, but you just, you just enjoy it. <laughs> you're just having fun, but you're not yeah. learning anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I need to do that. I think I need to add that to my list of things to do. Things to um, do daily. Yeah. I get like so out of touch. Like I had, yeah, like um, I kind of asking some of the guys who come into the office. We have like um, a couple guys who are uh, younger guys who are really nice, and they come in and do like sort of interning with us. Mm -hmm. um, they're much more than that now. They they're really cool, uh, and they like tell me all about sort of Pokemon Go and Overwatch and stuff. And like that's how I'm keeping up is by asking them. I'm not <laughs> playing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I need to schedule in my 15 minutes a day as well. Yeah. I use a Habit RPG, by the way. It's a, it's a little tool. It's a little game that you put your uh, your stuff you want to do every day. Like, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes of uh, exercise or something like that. Because, you know, we always work uh, sat down. I wanted to have my 15 minutes of exercise every single day. So I put uh, Habit. I think it's now called Habitica or something like that. So you, put, you put all your chores in there, put all your lists and uh, every day you can have it on your mobile as well so it can give you notifications and stuff like that so every day you can say like okay i did my exercise today i played piano for 15 minutes i play whatever blah 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 so you can put like all your habits in there and you get you gain more levels you can buy shit and stuff like that so oh my god this is going to change my life <laughs> <laughs> and we can create this. party by the way so hey let's hop aboard hop aboard the berserk train on the abitica <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome yeah I, I love it i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna become a habitica uh, <laughs> fantastic yeah nice it, it has become a plug for habitica and not super adventure but sorry <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about my game that's what i'm here for. <laughs> there you go <laughs> guys so get adventure powers get on habitica <laughs> How did the Flash game go with well, the first iteration? I think like it was like a huge, a huge success. The Flash game, the first one. Yeah, yeah, it, um, yeah, it went really well. I think it was like uh, 15 million plays or something like that. Um, it kind of scored pretty highly across the different sites, okay. Um, okay. and it just kind of like you know how you're saying like Tom Brain was known for the dinosaurs with the laser beams kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It sort of became the one that I would say like, oh, I made this, I made this, I made Super Adventure Files. Oh, yeah. so, you know, like that would be the one that people kind of recognize out of, out of them. Yeah, like so, Juicy Beast is Burrito Bison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So it's um, your flagship. Oh, what's that? I said it's your flagship. It's like, you recognize no, me from that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's your flagship. Uh, so it became sort of a flagship game and it was kind of just natural to do another one because yeah. we we kind of loved it and we saw there was a lot more we could do with it and like by its nature it's about coming up with weird kind of fun and imaginative ideas and like why wouldn't you want to do that that's just that's just great so we, that's kind of it was like a really natural thing we just kind of went okay we're going to start the second one in a couple months time little did we know that like three years later we'd be like here and uh <laughs> right at the end but we would never have predicted that we'd be like doing a steam and console kind of version so it has been like a hell of a journey but it's been really really cool and i wish you all the luck my friend oh thanks man you too <laughs> you too i'm so glad things are going well like with berserk and um and uh, and everything thanks man thanks but yeah it was very hard it was a hard time with uh, the flash game going down right but uh we yeah. adapt we have to adapt we're here. We're yeah. standing, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It was. It was like um. It was a terrible time because uh. It happened so quickly. I think. Yeah. Like it, it. was just like very, very quick. I mean, like everyone saw the signs coming. Like obviously, people knew. Um. But then all of a sudden it happened, and it was like whoa. Yeah. Well, wasn't... people were screaming that Flash is dead like since two thousand eight. <laughs> I think they still are. <laughs> they are <laughs> still are actually. They want that to be so uh, so dead, but. Uh... But yeah, I mean, after a while, uh, yeah, yeah, I, with the rise of mobile, it was getting harder and harder to get uh, 
funded for that. Are you still having uh, fans from uh, the original Adventure Pulse uh, getting super hyped for the, the new one? Well, we're trying to. I'm trying to like um, find those guys because I'm. I, we're we're like on the Adventure Pulse. We're on, we we had like a spread on the Armor Game site, and um, we uh, we're like people who I know, people who I speak to. Sorry, let me start again. People I speak to have like played the game, have right. been really excited, and at PAX we were ex um, exhibiting the game, and a couple people said like, "Oh, I played the original." I think yeah. like on um, on the Kickstarter page, one person said like, "I didn't even need to watch the video; I just backed it because I remember the first one and I loved it." Uh, nice. um, so yeah, but um, yeah, I, I think people people that we're trying to reach them like, and and when they find us, then people do seem to be. Really excited, and they only have like nice things to say about the original as well. Do you think um, you'll make a um, a flash like smaller demo version of Super Adventure Ball to push on Armor Game to try to say that like, hey, do you want to make, you know, do you want the whole deal? Do you want the, the the real game come over to Steam or consoles? Do you think you can use that platform? Yeah, I I think it's not going to be possible, unfortunately, with um okay. with the hacks because we use so many libraries that uh like C++ dependent so we can't okay. actually can't and the game is like um, full 1080p resolution okay. and 60 frames a second so like it, it would take like a lot of yeah. a lot to get it down working on a flash version so I know that like a lot of people have done that and it's been really good for them but it's I don't think it's something we can like physically do what if we you since now you release it on unity maybe you can do a web version with unity um, yeah yeah, or like um, mobile, maybe. What, what's your experience with like Unity to mobile? Does that is that kind of a well, powerful with, thing? with mobile, you'll have to take care of your controls. The control is like your worst enemy yeah. in there. So I don't <laughs> think that the platformer, unless you have like a bunch, like a small buttons and stuff like that, okay. But uh, you will be like, ah, it doesn't represent the real deal, you know, because I'm playing a platformer on a mobile. Um, so that's for that. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if like if you put it on Unity and push it on web, uh, I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> I was just like saying that because I had an interview with uh, Pesto Force, the guys that made Super Chibi Night. Yeah, yeah, I love uh, that game. Yeah, so like before, uh, like six months ago, and he said that uh, when he released uh, Super Chibi Night as a flash version on Armor Game, uh, his sale went up even higher than on the release date on Steam. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was, like, it was a huge, uh, huge bump. You know, he gave like, and there was a lot of insight on that. I'm gonna send you the, the interview actually, but he's talking about that and said like it's gave it's gave him like a huge boost, and he said that you have to uh, give at least like 90% of the game or something like that, and he did that like six months after the release, obviously, but uh, yeah. he said that you don't you have to push the game as it's not a demo but something almost complete, and if you want the last thing. Go over uh, Steam, you know, as like if, as if it was a DLC. If you want, if you run the real deal, go to uh, Steam to get the last, the last bits, and um, so yeah, it was giving a lot of insight on that. I'll, I'll oh, that's really that. cool. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I think that was like that was Flash, wasn't it? And that was that was a Swift that went on that he put on Steam. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. it's running uh, super well at 60 FPS and everything. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, usually, when you put a Swift and put it in full screen, it lags as hell. But uh, apparently, it didn't. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I played. I, yeah, I had no problems with it either. Like I, I played through the whole thing. It's it's great. It's a really fun game. Yeah, totally recommend it. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any problems either. So I get we're plugging. I get we're plugging other games than yours. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> uh, sweet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'd love to watch that. Yeah, I'll check that out for sure. Yeah. So that's why I was wondering if uh, I don't know if Armor Game uh, has Unity uh, games. I think so. I think, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, because like now, so many web browsers like closing down on Flash anyway. Yeah. Um, it's just getting kind of crazier and crazier. So, but like when you when you release games, do you try to hit like? Because I know you you do kind of hit a couple platforms often at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you kind of do deliberately, or do you do it every time, or does it just depend on the game? Well, the last games that we did was uh, okay. So on Vital, we did that because we wanted to release it on Flash as well and see if it would give us like funds or money or in-app purchases in there. 
And uh, it turned out that Flash is representing right now on Zombital, it representing a third of all the revenue from Zombital. So, Whoa! Yeah, a third. Wow. So a 30%-ish. Uh, it's all coming from in-app purchases, actually, uh, not from ads. Ads are very, are very hard uh, to, uh, to monetize on web. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Because everybody, all of the ad network just abandoned the web to go through mobile. So they went to the same thing that we are going to. But uh, <laughs> if you go on Armor Game, they have a nice uh, in-app purchase system. If you go on Congregate, they have a nice in-app purchase system as well. And uh, you can put that on Not Doppler and Newgrounds and the viral one as well. And uh, yeah, we were very transparent with Zombile though. We, uh, I mean, there's a video inside of Zombile saying, hey, this game is used to, for you to support us, you know, to fund us to work on all those things, you know. So if you, if you buy something in Zombile, you are giving us support to work on those other games. So we were, oh, very, we were very transparent. It was like, it's like a Kickstarter, it was like a Kickstarter game. So yeah. you get something in return. And uh, so, yeah, for some while, it was very uh, impressive to see that 30% of the revenue was coming from Flash. And uh, I'd love to, uh, to make an article on Gamma Sutra for that, like uh, say to other people, hey, you know, Flash is dead, but it's still representing a big chunk of my, of my, yeah. uh, of my revenue. So that was for Zombile. Also, that's why right now we are still providing um, support for the web version as well. So, and uh, it's also a good way to test your uh, uh, your game, your game mechanics, and everything. So there's a shit ton of people playing it, and you can say like, "Oh, we forgot about that. We forgot about that balancing." Blah blah blah. So it's a good way to keep web uh, the web version alive. Before Zombile, we had uh, was it Kick the Critter? I think we made Kick the Critter, but uh, Kick the Critter, we, we it was a work, it was a contractual work uh, for mobile. The guy only wanted the mobile version, and it was like okay. on the last days of uh, of uh, you know where you you can get sponsor for a game and everything. So we tried on the web as well. We got I think it was uh, um, in the five digit, but like ten or fifteen thousand for the web version. Okay, uh, nice. So it was still good, but nowadays you cannot do that anymore. It was oh, on yeah. the last days. Uh, <laughs> and before that, it was uh, SkyQuest, and SkyQuest was already sponsored like a year before that, so we only had to release it. So, yeah, but on all games, we had millions of, uh, of plays on the web. So it's still something, it's still something that can bring a lot of eyes to your product, to your games. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, yeah. uh, again, sorry, I'm still cutting you. <laughs> I'm alone talking. <laughs> no, 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 please, yeah. interesting. <laughs> but uh, in some vital, we had a little notification saying, hey, Latch is live, or hey, Kojak TSL is live, like another employee of Blizzard Studio. So you can see, you can click on it, and then it switch to Twitch, and you can watch the game developer live, you know? So that's a good way. Some vital has become a platform to get in touch with the developers. You know, you can see us coding live, and you can see like, yay, look at us. We are actually working on Infernax and the ships and me's, you know, you're not like running away with the money we're here yeah uh, that's cool and that and little... money that you spend comes to us while we're doing this exactly. you can see what you're spending money exactly, on exactly exactly yeah. so uh that little notification uh, i remember kojak tsl was streaming and he had like between five or ten viewers and then we put that little notification in and his audience went from five ten to like 150 and 200 viewers like in Whoa. a day so people were like clicking on that and now whoosh, just ramp up there you just like so and that was all coming from flash actually and then eventually we put it on mobile but like there's still traffic there's still very considerable considerable traffic in flash you know yeah that's, that's good to know that's Ooh. really good to know um we're gonna have to try and think about what we can do maybe we can put something small together uh we, we did like this little um brawling game that was like pixel art but it was for uh and it was like the Adventure Pals world. And the idea yeah. was that we'd put that out and kind of promote promote the game um, when we finally hit Steam. But uh, we kind of like ran out of cash a little bit and we kind of ended up sort of getting it sponsored and thinking and actually deciding that we'd just put it out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we kind of did like 
that was again like towards the end of the flash days but it was like a web and mobile deal mm -hmm. so it was kind of, we had to deliver both and that was kind of the thing for a little while was doing kind of both like you couldn't just do you know you know one up, up sold to the other mm -hmm. and it was like a sort of a pairing um yeah. but maybe we should do something like that um when when it comes to release time although i think like um working on like console games and steam release all at the same time is probably <laughs> hard to put in yeah, the basket i mean oh. right now you should just focus on i mean if you want my opinion focus on just releasing the game on both consoles yeah. if you want something on flash is like do so do that if you uh like at the end of life of your console and steam version you know when the yeah. the, the, the big hype has gone and everything then you can do something you know a special little flash games if you think it's worth it to break some more sales but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm telling all, all that to you, but uh, you said you were in an and it will be difficult to have it. I mean, if you already had something like that, well, it costs like a week of development and then boom, it's there. But uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's not suitable for, uh, no, no, just pushing that air. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, sa sadly not, but um, it's, yeah, it's good advice. It's definitely the way, way to do it if you can. Like, there's so many eyes out there, so many people who like want free games, and if you can then, mm. like what you did, like get them to kind of go, right, this is what you're supporting, this is why we need the money, Yeah. Uh, then like people can see you're honest and they're gonna get behind it. It's yeah, it's all, a great approach. It's all a game of a transparency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's already been an hour, Mr. Mr. Armstrong. So oh, we have hey. some viewer question. Are you ready to hear your the, the question yeah, from the viewers? Time flies when I'm talking to you, man. It's great. Sweet. All right. <laughs> we got we got Larkland asking a best lesson learned after developing your first large game. Best lesson. Question. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a great question. Yeah, totally. I think maybe I'll fire off a few different things. Um, one of them is it's it's an amazing thing to be able to do um to take one of your ideas and go right i'm going to put six months a year or whatever and other people believe in this idea and i'm going to be able to put it out there in front of the world so i'd say number one it's just like you just feel excited and grateful and kind of just kind of honored to be able to do that um mm -hmm. which is which um which kind of like I didn't I didn't see coming so much because it just it just it's very cool. Um, the other one is like the lesson is try to scale back a bit. Like <laughs> everything that you do, yeah. if you do something else, and then you do something else, it's not like another month. It's like another three months. Like everything is exponential. So like if you do um, one thing and then you add another feature and then you add another feature, well they've all got to work together so that's like not just three things that's like one two and then one two three and then again and again and again so like the like the scope can get wildly out of control yeah. like really quickly and i think that goes with any game yeah. um i often get like people coming to me and saying like um you know i've got this great idea for a game it's like it's like skyrim but it's like open world multiplayer and like you can do you can approach any problem the way you want to approach it and everyone like ha is like dynamic conversation and it and it, you just kind of go like aha uh -huh, yeah okay uh, i'll see you in like 50 years like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll totally. never finish that game you want to start with something like small and simple and then build on that yeah. and um i don't know that we got it right because we we've kind of gone for this huge thing and it's but that's what we wanted to do. We want to put our mark, like uh, our flag in the ground and say like, this is this is what we wanted to make and be proud of it. Um, but definitely start with like small and then build on it. Don't start with the grand, like the grand open world. I'd say, um, yeah, start with like a platformer that then has like an open world or, or a top down shooter, but then, you know, you've got all these different other elements to it and slowly like build it out like that. So, that would be another thing. Somebody uh, else told me, uh, if you want to make your own game, start by making Pong, and then Breakout, and then Asteroid, and then you can go and make your Skyrim, uh, like with playable <laughs> with a DDR mat, with the mobile interpolation, whatever. Like Then, after making those three games, you have to do whatever you want, but just make those three <laughs> games first. And like you, you realize that you spent like seven months on Pong. <laughs> and you say, okay. <laughs> No, it, I does. Know. It, it takes so long. It, it yeah. really does. 
Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, and I'd say that would be a big, big lesson for me. Mm. How come, uh, that question comes from me, how come you get excited for making a large game? I mean, I am in the different shoes. Uh, right now, Just Ships and Beats has so much hype and we are getting, I mean, a lot of people are saying like, oh, I can't wait to play this game and everything. And I'm very, uh, there's a huge weight on my shoulder, you know, because like at first it was like, oh, I want to make this game because it's awesome. Now I showed it to a couple of people uh, at multiple events during the past year and a half. And people are very getting very excited and come to me like, I can't wait to play this game. And now I'm like, okay, I have, the expectations are like this high and I have to, you know, I, I am so afraid to disappoint people. You know, I yeah. think I think I won't because I like my game and everything. But like the idea of the game I have in my head, and the the idea that people project from the demo might be different. You know, and I'm very fucking scared. So how? yeah, man, I I totally hear that. And like I think any creative always has that fear of being like an imposter, like imposter syndrome, where you yeah. where people are gonna find out that this is just like a game like this. But um. You know, not to put on your pressure, but I'm I'm pretty excited. I know it's gonna be I know it's gonna be an awesome game, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your answer. You just want to yeah. weigh in and say like I it's just, gonna be you know, awesome. <laughs> every time you wake up in the morning, like if you're not like sweating and shaking with fear, uh, then you you know it's not game development. So. That's a good point. Uh, that's I good mean, like point. I'd say, like for me, it's kind of almost different. Like where we're trying to build some hype, so uh, we get to kind of we kind of got to make the game in the dark. Um, and just work on it and make what we thought would be really cool. And now we're trying to generate hype and get people excited. Okay. Um, so we've kind of gone, okay, we really like this. Now let's hopefully everyone else will. Um, rather than kind of like everyone jumps on it and then you've got to make it. I can imagine, I understand why you'd feel like really pressured mm. about about that. Yeah. But we're like we're coming from it from the other side. So we're just kind of excited. And, you know, a year ago... Uh, a year and a bit ago, the thought of getting on Steam was like really exciting, and the thought of getting on like Xbox to me was just like wow. Maybe in 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 years and years, like I'll I'll be doing that. But like it's gotten so much easier, and and like you're you're doing it, so you just got to feel excited and grateful. And uh, like there are easier ways to make a buck, am I right? Like mm. there are easier ways to make a living. So if you're not kind of excited about it, then it's not really worth it. Yeah. That yeah. brings in another question, actually. Like, how, when development should a game developer show his game to the world? When? Like, early on or <laughs> once it's all polished? It's like that catch-22 catch question. Yeah, I think, take on it. I think it depends who you're showing. I think it really... Because if you show, like, your... Uh, your, I don't know, That's your, your, wife, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband who who aren't into games, mm -hmm. and it has, and it's you just got placeholder programmer art. They're just gonna the first thing they're gonna say is that looks terrible. You know, that's that's rubbish. What do you? But you go, no, no, no. Look at this cool <laughs> that we have here. Except your um, mom saying like, oh, I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tried something. Yeah. But let's say like a, a public release, like something that you show on internet, like not to your relative or your friends, just like. Yeah. A public one say like okay we are working on that when in development should we do that I think I think you should probably do it I mean I'd be interested to hear your your answer afterwards but I feel like as soon as you have good artwork you should be throwing it out there and getting feedback and um, when we started it we had you see, you see the character the re the, the sort of new design of the character from the original flash game um, had a nose and we put it out there and people went crazy. They're like, no, you, you can't have a nose. It looks terrible. And, <laughs> uh, and that was like two years ago, maybe. And so now now he doesn't have a nose and he looks much cuter. So it was the right decision. But people hated it. And he had like, he's got jean shorts and he used to have jeans. And people hated the jean shorts. But were like, we'll lose the nose, but the jean shorts, they're staying. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, just getting feedback as soon as you can. I think maybe artwork is probably the best thing. And then... And then as much, like we do loads of, on our Twitter feed, we do loads of GIFs of the gameplay all the time. Okay. Uh, and I think that's kind of good as well because you can show just like a quick snippet and you know, it's it's really quick. It doesn't, people don't have to watch um, a lot to, to kind of get it. Um, so we try and do that as well. But is yeah, I think. 
is there somebody on your team that is dedicated to make all those Twitter feeds and everything? Because right, I have the problem that I only focus on making games and then I see all those screenshot Saturdays and gift and uh, Facebook posts and everything. And every time, like everybody at Bazaar say like, eh, yeah, we should do that. And we always, always forget to, you know, let people post yeah. stuff and everything. I mean, we are like five or six people at, at, uh, at Berserk, and I think we have like 300,000 people uh, uh, likes on our wow. Facebook page, something like that. Oh, man. Because in Senna Coliseum, at one point, we were saying like, hey, if you like our page, you get that thing in Senna Coliseum, and it went nuts. We went from like a thousand likes to 200,000 200, within a wow. week, you know? Oh. So something like that. So my point is that we have that huge fan base on Facebook, but we always forget, uh, like, oh, we should post <laughs> something on there. Like, yeah. So. Forget about it. Yeah, so we, we like, I'm the same as you, man. Like, I, I've kind of said to everyone, like, I will not touch the, like, I, I use the Twitter quite a lot, but like, Facebook, I don't, I'm not a fan. Like, I don't really use Instagram particularly, but they're so important. Yeah. So, uh, Jimp is like really into uh, his Twitter and, and so he kind of does a lot more social media. Okay. Like I mentioned, we, we have um, a couple guys who come in uh, a couple days a week and just kind of help out. And one of them, a uh, girl called Emma, and she, that's what she sort of does um, among other things. One of her things is to like line up GIFs and tweets about okay. the games and we kind of schedule them for each day. Oh, okay. So yeah. we try and have like a GIF every day. Every day, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. Like we kind of, because we started from zero followers and we don't really have many flash games or anything <laughs> with massive monster. Yeah. And we managed to like we're kind of getting up there. I think we like have, I don't know how many we have like four thousand almost. Um. So it's like growing. It's growing. It's getting there. Yeah, four thousand. And I think like people like having that sort of visual thing. But yeah, I'm the same. If I could Every kind day. of never touch it. Yeah. Every. Well, like you do do like three in a day and then line them up. Okay. So then you can forget about it. But I'm like you, I would just never, never bother if I could. So you just said like, okay, guys, that's your problem. I'm out of here. <laughs> that's it. It's like, guys, I've got two games. I've got enough problems as it is. <laughs> I'm the president <laughs> around here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go do some tweeting. <laughs> uh, sweet. Uh, every day I'm impressed by that. I should, I should, I should check it out. Yeah, I mean, like it's there. Um, we use something called Crowdfire. And uh, it's it's really good. You can just line up pictures and tweets and schedule them. And there's even a button to like schedule them at the busiest times, so they'll oh, okay. send it on the busiest times. So it's kind of it gets it's easier when you get these like tools. Crowdfire. Uh, Crowdfire, yeah. Okay, I'll check that out. Yeah. Check it out. Sweet. How about another yeah. question for the audience? Uh, I've got a classic question, and I'm actually. Uh, Interested by this one. We have speed tube, speed tube asking, uh, how do you deal with motivation? Motivation? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really tough one. Um, to work in like kinda... a year on the same project. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, fear is quite a good motivator. Uh, <laughs> like, fear, like, uh, there's kind of like a continuum between like terror and joy. So, like, some, some points it's like really. You're kind of really into what you're doing you're kind of in the flow. you're like oh this great new feature and then yeah. sometimes you're kind of like oh my god i need to get this thing finished yeah. and i'm usually somewhere between the two uh and that's quite a good motivator but i totally struggle with that as well if you don't i think the best thing i'd say is if you don't have a clear goal for the day you won't get anything done mm. so you need to go in and go right i'm not going to be at the office eight hours i'm going to be at the office to do one two three four yeah uh, and five if I can, and then I'm gonna go home. And if I finish at two, awesome. You never do, you'll, you'll finish at 10. But <laughs> if you can finish at two, amazing. Um, and I think that's the way to do it, is to have tasks, have lists, um, and also work with people who are also motivated. So if, you, if your friends are kind of always not that motivated, um, then that, that's gonna be a bad influence on you as well. So those are, those are the kind of things I try and do. Keep lists and know what you wanna get done in the day. That's an amazing, uh, an amazing uh, advice, I should say. The, uh, like, do task one, two, three, not I'm going to be eight hours a day at office. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, I think, I think that's, um, 
I think that's a really good a good way to go. I, I didn't, I wasn't at the beginning of the game. I was like, I need to do 10, 12 hours a day at the office, and then I realized, like, by the third day, you're so exhausted. You, you know, you may as well do, um, you know, eight or, or or whatever, and then get a good good rest, and then come in and do a good eight and a good eight and a good eight. Yeah. Uh, you know, or a good nine, ten, or whatever it is. But the the more like energized and focused you are, the more you get done. So don't don't um, don't grind, don't yeah. grind that advice. I don't know about you, but when I code, I don't realize that I'm getting tired. Like at the end of the day, at five, six, seven, or something, I'm trying to work, and I'm like, no, I still can get get this. And then I start to make very stupid mistake, and then I get angry for nothing, for nothing. It's like, <laughs> why is it working? Oh, I forgot like a semicolon or something like that, and getting very stupid. So I don't like my brain doesn't realize he's tired. It's it's as if I can do a bunch of shit. Like, at, around the house or you know talk or whatever but my coding brain is exhausted it's like no please leave me alone and then if i just like stop and go go to sleep and the next day i come like oh this is super stupid i have to do this do this and that you know so i don't know like uh, i'm a strong advocate that your brain is working while you you're sleeping so have a good sleep is totally a, a good advice yeah but dude i have the exact same thing where it's you're just there and you're just struggling and struggling and struggling and then you come in and you do it in two minutes the next day yeah. and it's just it just like yeah, yeah absolutely you're right like mm. just just get rest and have some tasks to do and make sure you rest mm. so that's probably that's how to say that's how to do more is to do less totally totally agree yeah. how about another question there's another nice question Done. i like here is uh <laughs> gear is asking is flash dead is life bad? Is Flash dead? Is Flash dead? <laughs> Flash has been dead since 2008. Haven't you been listening? <laughs> it's a zombie, man. It's always getting back to life. Uh, Flash is unkillable. Okay. It will never die. There you go. Uh, we actually still we'll, we'll be using it for um, for artwork at least for like years and years. Hmm. It's it's an awesome tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We should say animator CC though. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was laughing so hard when they said, oh, yeah, we're changing now. It's called Animator CC, but we haven't only changed the name. It's like, yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. You added one feature and that's it. <laughs> that's crazy. That was yeah. such a, I mean, like, it's a whole conversation. We've probably been talking about Flash for too long. But, um, yeah. yeah, like, even um, Adobe seems to want to finish it off as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that they, they did the good move, actually. Yeah, it's calling them Animator CC and just focus on the animation part. Because uh, yeah. I still do think that uh, anima like Flash is being used um, by animators here and there. I mean, I know that Rice Pirates still use it. Uh, okay, they are using Flash CS3, though, know, because as an animator, I think Flash CS3, uh, a bunch of people are using Flash CS3 to animate. And I'm talking about full-fledged animation, the kind of like uh, Harry Partridge or Eagle Raptor. <laughs> or Rice Pirate, they're all using, I think they're all using, uh, I know that Harry Partridge and Rice Pirate use Flash CS3, I know that, and maybe Eagle okay. Raptor as well, but um, yeah, my point is, uh, I think that they had to switch uh, the name, at least the name, because Flash, the name Flash, everybody's wanted dead, and it's getting so bad press, and there's a lot of stuff inside Flash is dead, you know, we're talking about web game is dead, we're talking about Flash D, the Swift plugin with the security issue, that thing, they want that dead, but the tool yeah. as animators, that yeah. tool is still awesome, you know? So they it had is. to extract the the living thing, the awesome thing, and say like, okay, now that thing now is called animator when working on that. So I think that's, that's a good move from Adobe yeah. uh, to do, and they're actually working on having plugins to export the animation into Unity. So they're, they're working with, uh, yeah, I mean, I saw, uh, I knew that uh, there was a company called uh, GAF Media, uh, G-A-F Media, and uh, I knew that they were working on, you just drag and drop your Swift in there and then they export to Unity, you know, something like that. And at one point I saw it within the animator CC software itself. So like talking about GAF Media. So oh, cool. I can see that they are making the shift and say like, okay, I don't think that people will make Flash games anymore or nowadays it will go to Unity instead. So let's just jump on the board and say like, okay, well, you can have this to go to Unity, you know? So yeah. 
I think so, so. In a way, they, they signal that they're supporting the program still, but for a different... So, so there's your answer. Flash is dead. Long live Animate CC. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> which is the same thing, but with a hat. With a fancy hat. <laughs> fancy hat. A fancy hat. All right. Uh, and a nice question from uh, Maker Image saying, um, if you had unlimited money, unlimited power, and unlimited time, what would you do? What would I do? Wow. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't do a lot. I feel like I'd go get... back in time and kill Hitler. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'd, I'd do that. First that, and that's, then... that's, that's, that's what I would do. I was going to say I was just going to kick back in a jacuzzi full of uh, champagne and just kind of <laughs> eat and drink myself to death in, you know, laughing the whole way. Yeah, that's the uh, final goal but... of every indie game there, right? That's all what right. they want. <laughs> Jacuzzi full of champagne. Is that so much to ask for? <laughs> Please. <laughs> While my kids are starving in the background. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah, I'll give, they can have some champagne as well. Um, but yeah go, yeah, go back and kill Hitler is, is, is the right one to... Yeah. <laughs> I changed my answer. <laughs> nice. That's a, that's a tough one, though. That's a cool question because it's so it's so open ended. Have you have you answered it yourself in the uh, before? No, actually, it is, it is something that that uh, I would say has me concerned because uh, I said that in one of my indie your face video on YouTube, saying that if you had, like, I said that having restraint and having constraint for your game or creation or whatever you do, book, movie, yeah. whatever, is uh, is good. Uh, yeah. Because it forces you to do like, what can I squeeze? What can I do? Like, what's the best I can do within those boundaries? Within that, yeah. And that goes back to Frantic Forget and that uh, dinosaur that shoot lasers when they roar. That's all the stuff that we all did like within a couple of days, and that's it. Just with, just to have fun. Because what can we do maximum in three days? And then you end yeah. up making like. Uh, awesome stuff so if you have unlimited money power and unlimited time you get rid of all those constraints and what I did in my video on in your face is uh, I said like look what happened at uh, the um, the game uh, Duke Nukem the last Duke Nukem 3d oh thing. god yeah uh, you know there was like unlimited time a lot of people working on it and everything and then it ended up like disappointing people just because I, well, I believe maybe, you know, that's, I'm talking it through my ads right now, uh, but uh, maybe they didn't have any constraint or just say that we're gonna make this awesome thing, it's gonna use like all these features and all those stuff and blah blah blah. Yeah. And at the end, it uh, came out like it's difficult to have that. And I think that's even, uh, I think that there was a quote, I think it was from Orson Welles or something saying, the, uh, the enemy of art is the absence of constraint. Yes, I've heard that as well. Yeah, yeah. I re I remember your video. I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, giving yourself limitations allows you to be creative. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's totally right. And it was interesting when when they said like the first thing. It wasn't like w when that question was asked. I didn't think like oh I do this you know unlimited uh, infinite space exploration game where you yeah. it's just like well yeah I probably wouldn't there probably wouldn't be much to design because. You know, you want to have restraints. You want to kind of say, right, this is the world we're creating. And for a game as well, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a board game is very, very constrained. There are very precise rules. And mm -hmm. when you get towards simulation, I think that's when you can get a bit like dangerous in when you're making a game because yeah. if you're trying to make everything too real, you um, end up kind of losing the gaminess of it and the fun of it. So mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, absolutely right. Probably if I had unlimited times and unlimited budget, I probably wouldn't. Uh, make a game I'd probably do something else with that I think like having that constraint um, as you say I'm just completely stealing from you as and you've literally just said it just now uh, <laughs> go ahead go ahead you're yeah, in the yeah. spotlight in the front <laughs> there you go yeah um, yeah having that is, is so valuable in the creative process mm -hmm. yeah totally I, I was watching a uh, extra credits video yesterday by uh, James Portnow and uh, Daniel and we we're talking about games that you should play and uh, they were talking about one game, I don't remember which one was it, but they say that that game in particular tried to be so many different things at the same time. It's good, but it's not super great. And that asks the question, can a game be everything? 
Like, can a game be all genre? And the first answer is like, well, when you first thought about it, it's like, yeah, a game can be anything. We can do whatever we want. You know, we're like gods within those limits. But actually, yeah. if you want to try to be a lot of stuff at the same time, all those different things has to be polished as hell. So if you're trying to be eight different genres at the same time, it has to be intertwined, it has to be polished. And as you said, it, it's, it's getting exponentially uh, difficult and yeah. <laughs> it's getting exponentially like take much time that you don't have time to finish the actual game you know so it's a more difficult uh, question than it seems so should a game dev focus on like, being like one thing and being polished that thing only or like doing a different thing and I was like it was very interesting it was the last uh, episode from uh, I Store Critics I was like yeah kind of fits oh, wow. in, kind of fits in like uh, I never asked that question, like, uh, can a, be, a game be anything? But uh, it was like, it was interesting. Yeah, I think, I th yeah, absolutely. I think when you when you are trying to simulate everything, it's just, it's never going to be as good as as real life in a way. And mm. you know, having ultra tight gameplay is mm. is really ultimately much more interesting and successful mm. in in creating a good game. Yeah. Interesting question, my gentleman. Interesting, yeah. I want to ask you like one last question, my friends. It's already been like an hour and a half, and uh, yeah. I have to go back to my wife and kids do uh, do father stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my excuse to just. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, one last question is: uh, How's your experience with the Kickstarter community from the pad user? Uh, I think Kickstarter is really really cool. Um, I think. Um, one of the things I was really excited about was kind of getting, being able to communicate with people who want to back the game and want to copy and want to play it. So in terms of the, the people who are like pledging at the moment, really awesome. And, um, you know, if you do want to pledge, please, that would be wonderful, but please send me a message as well. And like, let's start talking because, um, that's the what... chat, by the way, feel free to spam the chat right now about your Kickstarter link and everything. Oh yeah, so I had to close the Twitch stream because um it was echoing back. Okay. But yeah, I'll I'll do that as soon as I get off. Um, but uh, if you just search, you know, the Adventure Pals, um, Kickstarter, it'll it'll come right up. Um, so yeah, for for that, it's been amazing. Also, Kickstarter as a company seem really really nice. Like we, we've kind of um, I know one of the uh, women who worked there, and um, she's great. She's been really lovely and kind of giving us advice and um, helping us, like guiding us through the whole thing. So we took we took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks before we even hit like publish. So it's it's been a huge process and it was kind of funny, like as I was sort of talking about how we, we filmed the kid and, and then there was all the gameplay video and then there's the filming of me in the office and then there's all of this stuff and then there's editing it and then writing the script, rewriting it. And what's been really great is People who have been successful on Kickstarter, like uh, mega successful, um, like uh, including like say Thomas Brush who made Pinstripe, um, Mu Yu who wrote who um, has recently done uh, Nights and Bikes, uh, and a bunch of other people, um, Will Dube uh, for Jotun. I kind of oh, got in yep. touch with those guys, yeah, and they're just so lovely, and they'll like have a Skype call with you, and they'll be like, "This is good, this isn't good," you know, and they everyone wants everyone else to do well. So I would say the community from people backing, um, the Kickstarter itself as a company and other people who have had campaigns has just been really good. Um, it's just been, it's just scary. It's just like a big scary process, particularly since we have like a fixed goal and if we don't get that goal, we get nothing. Um, and that, you know, that's, that's kind of scary. But aside from that, everyone's just been fantastic. And you know, the, the most exciting thing, as I say, is is just getting messages from people who kind of back the game because that's just that's just sweet, man. That's just <laughs> that's why we do it. Getting a lot of love before the game is even launched. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's what you know. That's what one of the reasons I wanted to do Kickstarter. So if um, I didn't, I don't know who was asking it, but if if you want to drop me a message or whatever, I can tell you more about it. And um, uh, I would totally recommend doing Kickstarter. Um, it's it's great. It's it's a lot of work though. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, your video in particular was so funny. It was so so good. We were like, we have to do something like that, but then we realized we're not funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh, why we have the video we do, which yeah. is just like a kid running around the woods. Whereas yours was 
fucking brilliant. Uh, thank you, uh, man. But we uh, yeah. we haven't done the, all the work that you uh, that you did before, though. We were just like, ah, fuck it, let's press publish, and that's it, and I hope for the best. But yeah, when you hope for the best and do nothing, it doesn't work. So we should have done like work before uh, weeks and weeks before heading publish because we we kind of we kind of failed on the Kickstarter. But uh, yeah, I really I like the video. Though. The video was like. When I punch myself in the face and everything I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic, man. Like ab absolutely, like we all just went, kept going back to that and just being like, "Can we do something as good as this?" And we just decided <laughs> that we can't do it. We that's can't. Right. So that's that's why we have the video we have today. And you're still plugging somebody else than yourself, my friend. You oh yeah, oh my god, <laughs> um, I'm useless. The other guys are gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna but finish on this there we go <laughs> <laughs> so by you know by every other game except the adventure pals whatever you do stay away from the adventure pals <laughs> that's the message from today speaking of uh, what uh, what can we do to follow you to follow the okay, so, of this so um we're at massive monsters with a plural massive monsters yeah, um we are massivemonster.co.uk um the game itself just search like right now. Just search the Adventure Pals Kickstarter. Uh, it's there. Uh, please back it. One of the this is one of the cool T-shirts you can get. A giraffe, sweet giraffe T-shirt. Uh, we got physical boxes and all sorts of cool stuff. Nice. Uh, we also have theadventurepals.com as well. Okay. Um, but if you just find massivemonster.co.uk as well, there's links to everything there. Sweet, perfect, man. So I wish you all the luck for uh, for Kickstarter, and I wish you all the best. And if I can help you somehow, please let me know. Yeah, and if I can do anything for you as well, please let me know. I always want to hear from you. Um, big, big fan of your stuff for a long time. Um, so thank you so thank much you. for having me on. It's you been too, an absolute man. pleasure. Sweet. Thank you very much, man. See you, uh, see you around. All right, man. Thanks. Bye. Uh, what a lovely guy. I love him. I love him, Jay.